Time for the sport now, and here is Gavin in Salford. Thanks very much indeed, Victoria. England are going to have to bat extremely well if they're to level their one-day international series against India in Pune. Uh, Josh Butler captaining the side in the place of the injured Owen Morgan won the toss and decided to field. They made a good start. Uh, reducing India to 37 for two, but some big hitting from Rishabh Pant and a fifth ODI century from KL Rahul helped the hosts to 336 for six. India lead the three-match series 1-0. All to do then for England this afternoon. 39-year-old Chris Thompson has qualified for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics with victory in the Great Britain Marathon Trials at Kew Gardens. Thompson finished the course in two hours, 10 minutes and 50 seconds, which was 40 seconds inside the qualifying time. It's been a great week for Thompson, whose son Theo was born earlier this week. This will be his second Olympics. He ran the 10,000 metres on the track at London 2012. I've never had such an explosion of emotion at the end of a race like that in my entire life. Um, it's been a bit of a heavy week, heavy few weeks. I'm still feeling that emotion now. Uh, but um, obviously, it's making a, an Olympics is special, but the journey to get here has been, has been interesting, shall we say. It's, nev it's never easy because you're trying to achieve Olympic selection. That's, it's, it's, it's meant to be difficult. Well, congrats to him. Stephanie Davis uh, won the women's uh, marathon race. She'd already achieved the qualifying time in Valencia in 2019 and took an emphatic victory this morning, surging clear of the rest of the field after the halfway mark. Sarah Hunter returns to Captain England Women for the Six Nations title defence. She was named in the squad for the upcoming tournament. Uh, England completed their second consecutive Grand Slam in November, but the 2020 tournament was hit by postponements and cancellations amid the coronavirus pandemic. Hunter was out with an injury as the Red Roses sealed their 16th Six Nations title against Italy, but she's back to lead the group for the 2021 tournament. Well, the men's Six Nations finally ends tonight. Scotland's uh, trip to France was postponed uh, last month due to a COVID-19 outbreak in the French camp. And this one will now determine who wins the trophy after beating Wales last Saturday to deny them the Grand Slam. The French can now snatch the title too if uh, they can score at least four tries against Scotland and win by 21 points or more. However, the Scots have been wound up by all the talk about France being champions and hope uh, to win themselves with a bonus point, which would mean their best ever Six Nations finish of second and that is all the sport from us for now victoria more for you in the next hour cheers kevin wales will end its stay local rules from tomorrow meaning people will be able to travel within its borders without restrictions it's the first uk nation to allow travel since lockdowns were reimposed and tourist accommodation is also going to be given the green light to reopen as hal griffith reports People wanting to come out. It's daunting if you live here as well. The Welsh Government has called on people to be cautious as they take this next small step towards freedom. Howell Griffith, BBC News. Poland's reported 35,000 new cases of COVID-19. That's the third record-breaking day in a row and the highest daily rise since the pandemic began. The number of infections is up 35% from the number reported a week ago, as Poland's third coronavirus wave continues to gain momentum. Health Ministry officials attribute the spike in infections to the highly contagious UK variant, which they say is responsible for 80% of all new cases. Lorry drivers arriving in England might have to take a COVID test if they are coming from mainland Europe. Drivers have previously been exempt from testing, but a haulage industry source has told the BBC that the government's warned them to prepare for the change. The Department for Transport says it's carefully monitoring an increase in cases in Europe and would keep all measures under review. The European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has said AstraZeneca must catch up with vaccine deliveries to the European Union before exporting doses to other countries, including the UK. The warning came after leaders met to discuss vaccine supplies. They blame AstraZeneca for delays to the rollout of the jab across the EU, saying the company failed to deliver promised doses. Here's John Donison. With much of Europe battling a third wave of the virus, no EU leader wants to appear weak on ensuring the EU receives its fair share of vaccines. 
Last night, the president of the European Commission said the EU had exported 21 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine to the UK in the last four months and nothing had come back in the other direction. Um, I think it is clear for the company that, first of all, the company has to catch up, has to honour uh, the contract it has with the European member states before it can engage again in exporting, um, in exporting uh, vaccines. But while the threat of an export ban on vaccines is there, many EU countries are still reluctant to enforce it in practice. And a statement issued after a marathon video conference call between the 27 EU leaders stopped short of explicitly backing the Commission's call for export restrictions. France's President Emmanuel Macron has said he backs export controls. But the German Chancellor Angela Merkel warned it was important to protect global supply chains. Guten Abend. Concerns shared by the leaders of the Netherlands, Belgium and Ireland. And as COVID-19 cases continue to rise across much of the continent, the tensions over vaccine supply are unlikely to end here. John Donison, BBC News. <laughs> and in Scotland they're going up slightly and it's a little bit worrying because really all that's changed is that we've opened schools and Scotland obviously opened its schools its primary schools a couple of weeks earlier and we're also seeing if you dig into the data that you are seeing increases in school-aged children and not in other age groups so it, it is kind of consistent with the story that as you know the sage modeling actually suggested that if you open schools then it does potentially push our to one or just above one and I think that's what we're seeing. I mean, so far it's not leading to big increases, but it's still, we know we're only two, three weeks in. Yes, we are only two, three weeks in, but the figures are level from the week before. Is that good or bad? Um, well, it's, it's expected. I mean, it's not great news because basically the current situation we're in is we're in where we were in November lockdown with everything shut except schools. And now we want to open further. And so what they're suggesting is that if cases are flat now, mm. then further opening could potentially lead to increases. And with the vaccine supply being a bit narrower in April, it also means that we're now slower in rolling out vaccines to under 50s, who are often the parents of people in school. So it does mean for the next four to six weeks, we might start seeing increases if we keep opening. But also, uh, as uh, when people have had their first and some are having their second doses now, once that three week period is up, they they will be immune to the virus as well. So that will come in in the next few weeks. Well, for first doses, it gives you about 70 percent protection from infection. I mean, from symptomatic infection, mm -hmm. which is really good, but it's not, you know, it's not 100 percent yet. The second dose gives you a lot more, but we're still quite a long way from vaccinating a lot of people with their second dose. We're now doing the over 80s. So we've still got quite a long way to go there. But obviously the vaccination program is good news, but we can't rely on that to kick in for a few more months to really drive down cases. Right. I understand that these figures from the ONS today are the same as September. What does that tell you? Well, obviously September was when um, Sage recommended a circuit breaker and we started the second wave. But that was a bit different because what we were seeing then was rapid increases in cases mm. and we're now seeing levelling, so it's flat. Um, I think also what we're seeing in Europe where they're having more trouble controlling our variant is that opening up with our new transmissible variant is more difficult. I mean, it is just harder. We're in a slightly different pandemic and we can't rely on the same level of measures that we had in October to have exactly the same effect. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's bring you a full weather forecast now. Here's Matt. Hello. It's a spring weather pick and mix out there today. Just about everything on the weather menu. We'll all see some sunshine just about, but there'll be some big downpours around with thunder, hail, even a bit of sleet and snow of the higher ground. There'll be some strong winds to go with it as well. Some of the strongest of the winds will be attached to this band of longer lasting rain across eastern England this afternoon. But beyond that, most places, it's the weather changing from one hour to the next. Sunshine, then those showers come through, rattling through on this brisk wind. And it's a cold wind too.
This evening and overnight will turn increasingly wintry. Could even give a temporary covering of snow for one or two of you into tomorrow morning. But the main risk tomorrow, I suppose, will be ice. Temperatures uh, barely above freezing in most parts of the country. The ground a little bit damp from today. The ice will melt, though. Many of the showers will fade for a while. Best of the driest and sunniest weather in eastern areas for longest. Clouding over in the west later in the day as the breeze picks up. Temperatures, though, maybe not quite as chilly as today. Bye for now. The BBC World Service has always been...